church, shall we rise? Let's just turn our eyes to Jesus.
the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, it's free in me. Now my death is paid, it is paid in full by the precious
Lord, we never quite understand, Lord God, uh, what you did. We do not know fully, but Lord God, what you did at the cross was a, 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 a something that our hearts are grateful. You say in your word, Lord, in Ezekiel 34, that you will be the shepherd of your sheep, that you yourself will make them lie down. You will search for your sheep and you will seek them out. We thank you, Lord God. You have sought each and everyone else here standing, Lord God. And we are thankful, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. We can be called to be your sheep. You, you laid aside your majesty. You came down. And you came down to seek the lost and to save the lost. And Lord, in our midst, Lord God, you know, we know that you have done that to us. To our loved ones too You have freely given And we have received Lord You didn't hold back You gave with open hands Generously Lord And Lord I just want to pray that right now Today Lord you know, as we, 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 we prepare our hearts Lord God In this fifth week of Lent Into the next week For the Holy Week We want to prepare our hearts Lord we say, Lord, we want to surrender all to you. We want to surrender all. We remember what you did at the cross, Lord God. And we say, Lord, help us not forget what you did. As you have freely given, Lord, may we freely give. We want to pray right now for those who are not well amongst us, whether it is sick in body, uh, mental, emotional, Lord, you know who they are, whether they are on site or online. We want to pray, O oh God, that Lord, you release your divine healing upon them right now. Man, the brokenhearted, heal the sick. Lord, restore them. Restore each and every one of them. Lord, you went to the cross for that purpose of taking all curses, all sicknesses to the cross. So we want to pray, O oh Lord, we lay her on your heavenly uh, Resources and you just pray that release it upon these, our brothers and sisters who are not well. Release your healing. So Lord, I pray, oh God, that Lord, even as we also look to you, Lord, for word, guidance, Lord, I just pray that Lord, this day, as they sit under your Holy Spirit, hearing you, you are the teacher, you are the guide, they'll hear a word. A word to minister to them, to bring them to a deeper understanding, a, bet, a closer uh, walk and encounter with you. We welcome you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Okay. Before I go into family news, maybe a quick update. Huh? Welcome, welcome, welcome to this uh, uh, PLCMC contemporary service, 4 30 Saturday service. All right. Uh, we welcome you, those who are on site as well as those online. Okay, um, if you've been following closely that, you know, the daily devotion uh, uh, book for Lent, uh, uh, you should be aware by now that we are on the, f you are in the fifth week lah, in Lent, okay, and next week we enter into the Holy Week, all right, and uh, leading to Good Friday, and then of course the Easter, right, okay, uh, this, this year is quite interesting, this year apparently the Holy Week uh, coincides with the Feast of Passover celebration, all right, and of course, you know by now that uh, Passover is when the, the, the spirit of death, right, the angel of death passed over because of the blood that is on the, the doors, yeah, and, 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 and likewise, uh, uh, we, we see Jesus as the lamb who took, the, who took all the, 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 the sin and the curses, and, and, and we have been freed because of that. Okay, so this is something which I just do for info. So right now, to just celebrate uh, 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 that Palm Sunday. Okay, so you notice some of tomorrow, you know, usually they will have leaves, leaves, palms, uh, palms, and they wave, you know. And that's where Jesus rode into Jerusalem uh, humbly on this donkey, right? Okay, so you even know the story, that's how what happens. All right, so this is where we are. And uh, just, just to go into this family news. Right. Pastor is going to be away. Uh, Reverend Leo is going to be away at this uh, pastor's retreat uh, from 12th to 16th of April. 
And, and so if there's any urgent pastoral prayer, you contact uh, the various church ministry staff. Uh, of course, we have the, you call church office. Church office will have the, the lay ministers. Or if you really, uh, before you hit there, you may want to approach your cell group leaders and all that. Okay? So that we will refer you to the right people where, where, where it comes to that ministry. All right? Uh, corporate prayer. Okay, every second Wednesday, we have our corporate prayer meeting. Okay? It's only one hour long. It's going to be on the 12th of April. 8.30 onwards. So the Zoom is there. Join us. Okay? Join us. Whether young or old, please join us. Cell groups, you, we want to encourage you to come uh, for this corporate prayer. Now, uh, this, this, this next week is going to be the Holy Week. We call it Holy Week. Okay? Every day, uh, it's going to be quite an active, a lot of activities going on. Right. So Good Friday is going to be a combined one led by CS, I mean LS. Okay, it's on the 7th of April at 11.15 a.m. So it is uh, on Friday. Uh, it's at here, L3 Century. And of course, CS Easter service is on Saturday, 4.30. But take note, uh, just so I know that, on that day itself, uh, we want you to, we want to encourage you to bring your, I mean, your friends, okay, especially those who are uh, maybe unchurched or maybe backslidden, or, or those people who have, you have invited during your last uh, Christmas party, you want to bring them, we encourage that to do, this, do so. All right? On that day itself, we will have a extra, like we call it extra CU Corner Fellowship at L2M. All right? We're now at L3. Huh? Don't forget, we're L3. We're going one step down. L2M, facing the AUP side. So we will have a little makan from the live group, People lah, so they, they, they have contributed items, uh, finger food lah, not not food dinner lah, finger food. That is something that we have. So we want to welcome you, join us that day. Okay, on on set on that day, we also have this. Youth are going for this Easter. It's a youth program, Easter sunrise, meaning that you know one side of the L two M, we will have our. Makan and the L2M nearer to the Bethany side, they will have the youth will come together, they will have their dinner and they have a night of program. All right, they will stay over or sleep over, they call it, sleep over until the next day and then watch the sunrise at the attic, uh, I mean, at the top of our building. Quite fun. So, if you have uh, youth, children, ch kids, uh, you have youth, uh, encourage you to join. Now, uh, Christine told me, remind, remind me, this is for youth, uh, huh? Uh, youth, I know that. Adult C is very interested, right? But no, all right? This is for youth. Okay. But then again, youth, the age group for youth are quite larger. Okay. Anyway, these are for you. So encourage your youth, child, uh, children who are youth to, to join in. Okay. Next. That's it. All right. Let's prepare our hearts for this offertory. Okay. Uh, you will see the, the two boxes there. And also the QR code behind the chairs, all right? Just, just uh, uh, be in a prayerful mood. Uh, be a cheerful giver as we sp spend this time giving unto the Lord.
seated. We have the scripture reading. Good afternoon, church. Uh, today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 1. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The Lord will go up from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Good afternoon. It's good to see everyone here in the house of the Lord. Um, today is Palm Sunday, right? And uh, the, when Jesus uh, was on earth, Palm Sunday was a time where they celebrated and welcomed the Messiah. Although they didn't know that Jesus was the Messiah, uh, but it was a custom you know, that they welcomed every p pilgrim that was coming into Jerusalem. And my prayer is today we will understand what it means to welcome Jesus, right? And today's text actually does teach us how we can welcome Jesus even as we prepare for His second coming. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, truly we want to really worship our Lord and Saviour Jesus in the right way. We pray, dear Lord, that even as we hear Your Word, Jesus may be established in our hearts, in our mouths, in our worship, in our lives. Because God, we at this point in our lives here right now, Right in this worship service, it is a, 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 something like a um, practice before we actually enter the time where Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and the whole world will come to worship Him. We pray, dear Lord, that even as we establish You in our hearts, may You establish Yourself in our lives and be glorified in all that we do. This we pray to Christ's name. Amen. Alright, so what's the big deal about the Messianic age? Alright, uh, today Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 to 5, if you had heard uh, scriptures being read, uh, actually describes the Messianic age, it describes the millennium, alright, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, okay? And you may be asking, you know, what has this got to do with me? Alright, um, I'm far away from that one thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, alright? So what, what, what has it got to do with me? How is it applicable? Well, let's look at a, bit, a little bit about the background to find out why the Messianic age uh, was so important for Israel. All right, uh, the background is in chapter 1. Today's text is in chapter 2. Uh, at that time, they were a people who didn't understand that the Lord God should be their Lord. They were evil and corrupt nation. They were leaders. Uh, they had leaders with no soundness. Uh, they had been desolate and plundered. Right, there was the Assyrian siege at that time uh, and it was war-torn conditions. Uh, so Israel was at that time uh, perhaps suffering in some ways like Ukraine. All right, uh, there perhaps food, famine, uh, fear, insecurity, uh, all these things they were suffering from. Uh, so what they felt was that, hey, we need to get the worship right. And what they did was they tried to be more religious, verses 10 to 15. Uh, they tried to be, uh, worship the Lord more, you know, give more sacrifices. Uh, but they realized that this wasn't the way because their inner change, they had not been changed inside. Right? And God still faulted them for the way they treated the poor and the oppressed. So basically, there was no shalom. There was no shalom. There was no order. There was chaos in the world. For us as well, we perhaps may not have a physical, chaotic, external world, but I think many of us have a chaotic inner world. We suffer from different things. Some of us may suffer from depression and anxiety. Some of us may suffer um, from guilt, all right? We, we always feel guilty, we feel inferior. Uh, so we suffer from different things. Some of us are just grumpy and unhappy, all right? Because we, we find that our souls are not rested. 
Alright, it's in a, st- a constant state of tension, perhaps affected by the things outside. Maybe our family is in di- chaos and disorder, and so we feel it internally as well. Right? So Israel faced an external chaotic world. We may face an internal chaotic world. Basically, no shalom. So how? How can we have shalom? How can we have peace and order in our lives, despite sometimes the external chaos that we may find, right? Maybe some of us have external, uh, uh, our lives externally are chaotic. Perhaps some of us, we are very blessed. There is no external chaos in our lives, but our inner world is still rather chaotic. So that's what Isaiah did. Israel was facing all this chaos, and then God gave Isaiah the prophet a vision. In verses 1 to 2a, Isaiah says this, This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the last days. So God gave Isaiah a vision of the millennium. All right? The word last days can refer to the tribulation. It can also refer to the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. All right? And in this passage, verses 1 to 5, actually is a, a, a picture of what the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ would be like. So God gave Isaiah this picture. Why? What's so great about this picture? What's the solution to Israel's chaotic world today, now? The first principle is this. The first thing that Isaiah saw was that the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established. As the highest of the mountains, it will be exalted above the hills and all nations will stream to it. So the the Here, God reveals the first principle. And the first principle is this, that the worship of Yahweh became or will be the centre of the world's life. Can I suggest for us, the principle is the worship of God or the worship of Christ should be the centre of our life, should be the centre of our hearts. If we want to have peace in life inwardly, Right? to overcome all the challenges you may have in work, uh, in family. If you want to have that kind of peace, you need to have Jesus Christ as the centre of your heart first. So that's what Isaiah described all right, and told Israel. This is what he saw. So what's the significance of this? Right? The, at the, currently, Mount Zion, it is where uh, the temple used to be located before it was destroyed in AD 70, was actually lower than the nearby Mount of Olives. All right, uh, where Jesus prayed, and many other mountains. Then, all right. So, in the ancient world, uh, they located temples on the highest mountains. All right, because it was closest to God. Okay, uh, those of you who have been the army, uh, how many army people here? You have been to Taiwan. You have been to Taiwan sent by army. You have not, huh? I went there two or three times. Some of you may have a favorite signal, a signal signaler. So, favorite vocation will always go Taiwan. Why? Because of mountains. All right, uh, and my deployment is always uh, we we I, we were a signal c- a company and we drove the Unimog. I know army people, you all know what a Unimog is, right? Uh, with all the antennas, kind of thing. All right, and then we set up comms. We set up uh, relay stations, then uh, people can use the phone. You know, the general can talk to each other. Uh, so that's what I did, right? So basically, I don't see the enemy. I only see the artillery shells coming on me, right? Uh, because I'm we are always on the mountain, right? So in the mountains, I realized. There were a lot of temples. Really, every mountain got a temple. You know, this is the belief of a lot of people, even Israel then. All right, the, the worship of God is usually situated in a high place because the belief that's where you are closest to God. So the problem here is that Mount Zion wasn't very high. <laughs> right, but you notice that what Isaiah said, saw was this. The mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. So perhaps it might mean two two things. One, if we take it metaphorically, it may be the greatest prominence. That means this mountain will have the greatest prominence uh, in the entire world. But who knows, if you take it literally, then perhaps God was going to do some changing in, among the mountains and all the earth, all right, and then elevate Mount Zion or elevate where uh, the Messiah will be to be a very, very high mountain, at least compared to the surroundings, 
All right. So either way, the main point is this. Uh, it symbolizes the preeminent worship of Yahweh in the whole world. How do I know in the whole world? Because the word nations refers to Gentiles, can be translated Gentiles or nations. That means all the nations were streaming to worship Jesus the Messiah. All right, uh, the word streaming suggests enthusiastic, non stop pilgrimage and worship, excitement and buzz. So, my friends, Isaiah saw the first thing if you want peace in the whole world, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, needs to be the center of the universe. Needs to be the center of the whole earth. Can I suggest for us as well? If you find your life chaotic and you are disordered in your soul, all right, uh, things trouble you frequently, uh, or you're just unhappy within, can I suggest perhaps Jesus Christ is not the center of your heart? And if it's not, that's the first thing you need to do. You need to have placed the worship of Jesus first as the center of your whole orientation in your heart and in your life. That's what Isaiah saw for Israel. And that was the key that he gave Israel, that they needed to put God as the center. So that's the first thing. All right, so maybe for us to think about is the Lord at the center of your heart. You know, is when you come to worship, uh, how do you feel? What do you expect? Are you here because, okay, la, I have to be here. <laughs> All right, if I don't come, maybe pastor will notice I'm not here and start scolding me. You know, my CG leader you know, will start asking, hey, you know, where have you been? I have, don't ha- I have not happened to see you. So I'll say, hey, you better come, okay? All right, that's a polite way of saying you better come, right? So, so, so why are you here? Are you excited to be here? When you come here, are you, do you want to honour the Lord? Or you're just doing it week in and week out? You see, my friends, a good test whether Jesus is in the centre of your heart is this. When you come for worship, are you really worshipping? Or are you going through the motions? Are you sitting down there, right, playing with games like FIFA, even as the service is happening, right? You, right now, I heard three of you were playing with FIFA last week huh, as I was preaching the Word of God, okay? Oh, you think, you think what? I got prophetic eyes right now. I can see through all the pews right now, huh? All right, so that's the point. You see, if you, if you love the Lord and you're excited and Jesus is the center of your heart, you, when you come here, you want to worship the Lord. You're excited about it. It's not like I sit here, I relax and just sit back, lie back. Lie. No, then the love of the Lord is not primarily in your heart. My friends, we need to get first the proper and right worship of God. Jesus needs to be in the center and is reflected in our worship. And that's what Isaiah saw. The whole nation, nations of the whole world. You know, can you imagine? They have to do a pilgrimage. Can you imagine if, I assume, still, got, let's say America, right, uh, at that time. Can you, people, can you imagine nations like the Americans will travel all the way to Israel just to climb up the mountain? I don't know whether they'll provide bus service or cable car or whatever, right? But probably walk up, you know, you walk up half a day to go to the temple of the Lord to worship God. You all take 45 minutes, really grumble. Wow, so far away, church so far away, you know. But here, this was how excited the Gentiles and the nations were. They realized this is Jesus, the Messiah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I want to give him the proper honor and proper respect. And I'll go all the way up, no matter how far it may be, how difficult it may be. I'll go up, I'll spend you know, half, probably at least, I don't know how long, whole day before you can come or whatever, to go and worship the Lord. Second principle, the word of Christ was the center of the world's, world's learning. Verse 3, many peoples will come and say, come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways so that we may walk in His path. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So my friends, yes, they went up to the temple to worship God, but what is the primary means of worshipping God there? Verse 3. 
the primary means was to sit down, or maybe they stood in the, the Jewish days, they stood as the teacher taught, they stood and they heard Jesus teach them with his own words. Worship is not a matter of just lifting up of your hands in praise to the Lord. Worship is having the Word of God in our hearts. That's what they went up for. It was not just to give thanks and praise to no verbal way. They went up to listen. They opened up their hearts and their ears and they sat there in rapt attention to listen to the Lord. That is what will draw the mess. The best seminars by the best guru in the world, Jesus the Messiah. All right, he will instruct concerning the law and his words will teach us how to live life. And the assumption, I think, is that it will be the, our best possible outcome for life. You know, I don't know whether you are in the finance world, all right, but I believe that, you know, if you know that, uh, I don't know who, who's a hero now in the finance, Bill Gates or whatever, you know, if there's going to, you know, this seminar that's going to be conducted by Bill Gates, uh, or maybe, you know, if, uh, by, by, yeah, maybe the Prime Minister or, or, or the President of the United States, right? Well, wow, you know, many of, you, of us will go and buy tickets, you know, go and listen to the wisdom of this great man. My friends, how many of you buy tickets to come to church? How many of you will pay money to come to church? But yet here you have the wisdom that is better than any wise man in the world. You know? But here sometimes we sit and listen to the word as if it's like valueless. No point, no meaning, no value, no outcome. My friends, these people in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ will go up to the mountain and they will sit and hear, open up their hearts and hear Jesus. Where are our hearts when we come to hear the Lord? Okay, I must the the youth a bit. Huh? Is FIFA your God or is Jesus going to be your Lord? These people went up to worship Yahweh. This is an example of the, words, words, uh, the word of God's wisdom, all right? Uh, 1 Timothy 6, uh, 6 to 11 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires, then plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you men of God flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Right? This is a simple example of the wisdom of God's word for our lives. Compared to God, Jesus says there's only one other God. Jesus says you either worship God or mammon. All right? And mammon, does not, it's not just money, it represents all that money can buy, all the pleasures that you can enjoy in the world today. So if you don't have God in your heart, you will have mammon in your heart. If you are not following and pursuing God, you will be pursuing money. And what will happen is that as you pursue money, you will find that greed comes, all right. I know of people, I, I'm sure people have been scammed. I don't know who here. Uh, I, in my own family also, there's one person I won't name who, who has also been scammed, you know, because of greed. All right. Uh, stock investment, you pour all your money in because you say, you know, this one is a sure win, you will get more money. And then when it crashes, what happens? You lose your money. Greed. Greed. Greed is driven by our need for pleasure. Isn't it? We want more and more and more. And the scriptures tell us, hello, if you are contentment, that's wealth. If you are contented, that is wealth that money cannot buy. In fact, if you are contented, you are wealthier than the richest man in the whole wide world. Money doesn't satisfy your need for security or your need for possession. It makes it worse. 
uh, not to condemn any rich person here, all right? But sometimes, you know, when you drive along the road, you find that, hey, sometimes it's the big cars uh, that are a little bit, a little bit more uh, not very considerate. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm right. Uh, that's uh, some things that I observe. Uh, maybe even in, in terms of, you all have been to mission trips? All right, if you have been to a mission trip, you see all these third world children, all right, and they're enjoying playing soccer in, under the rain and they're so happy. All right, but yet for us, for our use, you know, can all the Xboxes and everything you want, and yet you are still not happy. You are still not contented. My friends, this is wisdom from the Lord. All right? And yet when we come, we are not opening and we're not hearing from the Lord. We're still pursuing our own desires. We're still seeking and hearkening after money. And you'll find that in the end, you are still unhappy, although you may be rich and wealthy. Being contented will make you richer than a high income. All right? Being greedy will make you poorer than any income can satisfy. Right? So this is the wisdom of the Lord. And every week, week in, week out, the word of the Lord is being taught. My responsibility is to teach you the pure word of God as it is found in the scriptures. All right? And if it doesn't excite you, if it doesn't give you the wisdom, it doesn't give you happiness, then... My question or our question may be, where is our heart in all of this? So first, the worship of the Lord should be the center of your heart. Second, the word of God should be the center of your mind. Who would then flock to, want to flock to such seminars that can enrich your life to the uttermost? The question is, the word of Christ the center of your learning? And let's be honest, it is not isn't it? It's not because we may not even have a regular quiet time reading God's Word or meditating on God's Word. Then, what is the center of your mind? Are the values of the world, the thinking and philosophy of the world, the center of your mind? Because if you really, really value God's Word, that really such wisdom, such truths are found, this is the Word of God, then you will read and meditate on the Word of the Lord. And if you don't, then where are your values? And that's where the back to basics thing is about. I really believe, you know, that if we really let the Word of God speak to us, it can resolve a lot of our heart issues. It can resolve family issues as well. Not totally, but that is if every family member really obeys the Lord, you know, and follows the Lord, it will solve a lot of family problems. All right? It will solve a lot of problems and issues concerning people in life. You know, the problem in life actually are not it's not work per se, uh, it, it, it's not material things or the lack of it, it's actually people, isn't it? People are the problems in life. Why? Simply this, I have seen families split up uh, because of money, especially when it comes to inheritance, right? They are all okay, but suddenly when they need to split up the inheritance, Wow, you suddenly see all the fangs come out, you know. Everyone wants to insist, this is my share, you know. Wow, there is no end. Money can split the whole family up, isn't it? We move on to the third principle. So, the first is the worship of Christ, the center of your heart. Second, the word of God, the center of your mind. Right? It needs to rule your mind. It needs to guide your mind. The truth, you need to follow it. And the third, the wisdom of Christ or the wisdom of God, the center of your relationships. And this will bring about peace. Verse 4, He will judge between the nations and will, dispute, dispu uh, will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their short swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Here, here is a picture of Jesus as he teaches, and then they carry into their lives. You find that they have peace in their relationships. They have peace in their souls, all right? So this is the instruction from God's word uh, to our life. Such wisdom, when applied to relationships, result in universal peace. 
Uh, if there's still China and US, I don't know whether there will be. Uh, Russia and Ukraine, you won't have all these wars. You won't have these problems because the wisdom of Christ will be there. Peace will be there. All right? And not just that, for us, husband and wife. Husband and wives. You know, it is very difficult to stay happily married. <laughs> right? Those of us who are married for many years, you know this is true. Right? It is really, really difficult and really, really challenging. And there are a lot of things that is in your heart, you know, that you just, after some time, just give up. Like, don't tell your spouse anymore. Or you just accept things as they are. All right? It is not easy. Many marriages uh, may be in trouble. Or if not in trouble, then at least it is in what I call a, uh, not peace, but just, yeah, you kind of just accept things and you kind of live your own life. You live parallel life perhaps just because you don't want to get a divorce. It is not easy, all right? So husband and wife, even parent and child, it is not easy because sometimes there are times a lot there will be clashes. You know, I'm not sure whether your children uh, have uttered these words before, but uh, n- not my son here, uh, but the, another person, another child of mine has ever uttered, you know, you are the worst father in the entire world. <laughs> right? Uh, and then also told my wife, you're the worst mother in the world. That also made me feel a bit better. Uh. Right, so, so, not easy. Sibling and sibling, also a lot of tension, a lot of friction. All right, I've seen it happen so many times. My friends, that is when the Word of God is not the center of our hearts and lives and minds. Then all these conflicts, all these problems can happen. So, can you think about it? You can experience heaven here on earth right now. Not necessarily physically, externally, but in terms of relationships, in terms of your heart. Heaven can occur here right now. So this is important because I think the source of most unhappiness is relationships, all right? Not so much uh, material things. Uh, the source of the world's problems are also relationships. Think about it. Murder, envy, lust, etc. are due to abusive, unequal, and unloving relationships that happen, all right, that you experience. Okay, so it's the wisdom of Christ, the center of your peace, the wisdom of Christ, the center of your relationships. Are you living in obedience to God's word in your relationships in your life? So finally, it ends in verse 5. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Is he the light that guides your path in life? Right, so the question maybe you want to ask, I quote from a commentator. He makes this good uh, insight and observation. He says, Isaiah has this brief look at the ideal Zion of the future with a call for his audience to transform their thinking, to reorient their worldview, and to change their behavior based on their knowledge of what God will do in the future. Judah and his leaders can go their merry way and continue to be self-absorbed or they can choose to glorify God and follow His instructions. Isaiah exhorts his own people in Jerusalem to follow the example of the foreign nations of the future. The people's response to this choice will determine whether Isaiah's audience will enjoy the kingdom of God, the kingdom God has prepared for those who follow Him, or miss out on this great privilege. The same choice is required of all people since the time of Isaiah. People in every generation must choose to come to God learn of his ways and enjoy his kingdom or they can proudly focus on their own accomplishments close their ears and eyes to what god says and suffer a humiliation similar to what isaiah prophesies in the following passage so let me end by asking you a few questions if you hear of the greatest uh, seminar that improves your wealth health well-being finance everything in your life will you go and sign up without persuasion, I'm sure you would, wouldn't you? But here you have the Word of God, and we don't value it like Isaiah does. Like in the thousand-year reign, every person in the entire world would. Such wisdom is already available to you. Will you come to your temp- to the temple on your church mountain? We are not really on a mountain, uh, but this is our church mountain. This is our church temple where we come to worship. Will you come to hear Jesus instruct you personally on a daily basis? 
in your daily quiet time, in your regular time with God. If you access to great wisdom that grants you success in life, enriching relationships, wholeness and well-being, and can please God, why won't you come to hear the word in church and also and spend time with the Lord at home? And this is what I want to challenge us. Do we want to take our faith seriously? Let's pray. I want to give us some time to come before the Lord today. You know, sometimes I think we don't value how wonderful our salvation is, our eternal life is. And I think perhaps we have gone cold in our worship of the Lord. We have not valued His Word sufficiently enough. But today, can I invite you to come before the Lord, to enjoy His presence, and to commit yourself to Him once again. Even as we later partake of the Holy Communion, can I invite you to really make the worship of Jesus the centre of your heart. There should be no other love there should be no other thing that drives you in your life. Would you like to make the Word of God the centre of your mind? Can you fill yourself with the Word of God so that you can face every challenge? You can know how to live a life that is worthy of Jesus. And would you like to make the wisdom of Christ the centre of your relationships so that there may be peace in amongst uh, your relationships in your home, in your workplace, in everyone that you relate to. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that we don't need to wait till the millennium for Jesus to reign and for us to experience the blessings of the millennium. We want to thank you, dear Lord, that we can experience it today, right now, because God, you have given us your kingdom by giving us your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit is in us and in the sense we are also the temple of the Lord. I pray, dear God, that today you will do a mighty work. Father, that you will root away everything, every obstacle that stands in the way, in the worship of you, that stands from honouring you in our hearts and in our lives, that perhaps doesn't really understand to the lies, the the the. the the, the sinful desires that block our relationship, that block our love for you and your word. We ask, dear Lord, that you may take it away because God, your wisdom, your word, and your worship is life-giving. And even as we come, dear Lord, and we receive once again your sacraments and we remember that Jesus died for us so that the kingdom of God may be in our hearts, we pray, dear Lord, that you may establish your kingdom once again in our hearts and in our lives. This we pray through Christ's name. Amen. This time, invite the worship team to lead us in a time of preparation, even uh, as we receive the Lord's sacraments. Shall we rise? It's your blood that cleanses me. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that took my place in redeeming sight. Just me. 
time, let's come before the Lord. I'm going to give us some time for you to say your own personal confession of sins. You know, perhaps you have not treated God and the worship of the Lord in an honourable way or with great enough honour. Would you like to make that commitment to the Lord? To make your confessions, make that commitment to the Lord. Say, Lord, I have to put your worship as my priority. I have to put your word as my priority. I have to put your wisdom as my guide in life. Would you like to renew your Christian vows? Renew your commitment to the Lord. So I'll give you some time for personal confession of your sins. And I'd like to invite the AV team to just prepare the slide for the Great Thanksgiving. We'll begin with the Great Thanksgiving. So do pray, say your personal prayers and confessions unto the Lord at this time. I feel the Lord wants to tell us, you know, my children, I have such happiness that I want you to have. But the happiness is found in me. The happiness is found in my words. I want to give you abundance. I want to give you life. But you're not seeking from me to have life. You are seeking the world you're seeking other sources but you're not seeking me Heavenly Father we want to ask for your forgiveness if I've been so distracted by other things by the world and maybe we have taken you for granted we have taken your worship for granted we have taken your word for granted we pray and confess Lord today and ask that you forgive because you are such valuable treasures that have been given to us. Such valuable blessings that we are missing because we have not treated you serious enough. Help us, Lord, to really treat you seriously even as Christ treated us seriously by dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord, that even as we confess our sins, you are always faithful and just and you forgive us of our sins because of Jesus Christ and what He did. But even as we celebrate the sacraments, Heavenly Father, may You strengthen our hearts once again. May You affirm us, make us, make our commitment firm, make our heart firm in You, Lord, so that we will always, always love you with all our heart with all our soul with all our strength with everything that we have we thank you and even as we partake of Jesus Christ's body and blood may you once again renew the life of the spirit within us thank you for your forgiveness Lord in Jesus name we give thanks and praise Amen so with the heart of thanksgiving let's continue with the great thanksgiving please respond the words in orange the Lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you Father Almighty Creator of heaven and earth you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life when we turned away and our love failed your love remained steadfast you delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Together, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of, of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. 
By the baptism of His suffering, death and resurrection, You gave birth to Your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, He promised to be with us always in the power of Your Word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took bread, gave thanks to You, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all, all in glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come your, your will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ and the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time, we would like to invite you to be seated. Uh, the ushers will guide you forward to receive the Holy Communion. Do come from the center aisle to receive the sacraments and then you will return uh, by the two side aisles to where uh, your seats are. For joining us for the first time you come forward to collect the sacraments and then when you return to your seats at the end we will all partake of the sacraments together
Jesus said, This is my body broken for you. Take it in remembrance of him. The blood of Jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of this in remembrance of him. Shall we say the prayer together? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others in the, in the name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite the worship team to lead us in the closing song.
want to wait till the millennium for you being the center we want you be our center even right now the center of our lives the center of our church so be exalted in our midst oh lord so go forth and may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god our father and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all now and forever amen amen please do be seated the service is over. Do have a blessed weekend. The Lord bless you.